in the realm of release. I wonder why, why don't we see more of God's power flow through the church and through the body of Christ? Why don't we see more of the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost? In the lives of spirit-filled believers, we don't seem to see as much power as the Word of God says what we're supposed to see. It is as though the body of Christ are not in a place in their lives where God's power can flow through them. As the Lord led me to take an inventory of the body of Christ and, of course, also of myself, the Holy Ghost has revealed to me through His Word, and I'm really excited about it, something so wonderful that it's going to set all of us free. Amen. And that's what I'm going to share with you this evening. In John's Gospel, chapter 11... What we've got here is the story of Lazarus. It's a, Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. He was sick. Of course, he died. And then he was, Jesus resurrected him from the dead. And I will begin here in just ver, uh, verse 1. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and when he had heard Therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. In other words, you cannot walk in darkness, of course, and and walk in the light, can you? These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus, is dead. Lazarus is dead. <clears throat> One day, into that peaceful home of Mary and Martha, came the shadow of a dark cloud. Lazarus, their brother, was stricken with a fever that broke out very quickly and very suddenly. If anything were to be done, it had to be done quickly. There was one thing that instinctively came to their minds, the same thing that would come to our minds, our beloved Jesus Christ. If only he were there. If only Jesus were there, he could heal Lazarus. He could heal their brother. Therefore, a message was sent to Jesus, and we see here in verse 3, Therefore his sisters sent unto him, meaning Mary and Martha, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now you may want to notice there that when they said, Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick, there was no fear, there was no despair. In other words, when the sudden storm arose, Mary and Martha had peace. They had peace. How different are they uh, who give no care to spiritual things? They don't have any peace, do they? They don't have the Lord to give it to. But you see, Mary and Martha knew Jesus because it was the same Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. And then we see in in verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Jesus had made a declaration 
just like we were making declarations this evening in, in the, the words of our song that we were singing in the praises. Jesus had made a declaration. This sickness is not unto death. In other words, what we have here is a message of victory. And then we see here in verse 6, the, Lord, the Word of God says, When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still. In other words, he stayed another two days where he was at. <clears throat> so in the meantime, what had happened to Jesus? All the time, Lazarus was in his uh, thoughts, yet he tarried beyond Jordan two days, another two days longer. Jesus, who was the resurrection and the life and the master of death, need not hurry to keep an appointment with death. Death must bow to the Master. Death must bow to Jesus Christ. You see, the story of Lazarus carries a very important message to those who search for Christ's deliverance. Faith demands a committal that looks not at the conditions, not at the symptoms, but only at the promise. Only at the promise. Now we're going to go to verse 32 of John's Gospel 11 here. Verse 32. <clears throat> then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and she saw him, there was Jesus had come back... <clears throat> She fell down at his feet, saying unto him, <clears throat> me, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. In other words, all of a sudden, Mary had forgotten the revelation of God's goodness. She had listened to the voices of doubt and unbelief. Y'all remember the message of doubt and unbelief? Okay, praise God. Mary was weeping and blaming Jesus. In other words, she had forgotten the promise. What was that promise? That this sickness is not unto death. So as we keep going here, we see here, uh, verse 34, and said, Jesus said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Verse 36, and Jesus wept. That's verse 35, I'm sorry. Jesus wept. <clears throat> I believe he wept because of their doubt and unbelief. But he also wept because of his great love for them. Just the same as his great love that he has for us. And we'll keep moving here. Verse 36. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should have not died? Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And verse 39. Jesus, there, oh, sorry, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe and thou, that thou hast sent me. And when, he was, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, Come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his feet or face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Hallelujah. Now we're going back to verse 39. In verse 39, we see here where Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. In other words, <clears throat> Jesus confronts the grave with a fearless faith. He said, Take away the stone. Jesus is going to take some stones away here tonight. 
He's going to take some stones away tonight. And I thank God for His mercy, for His mercy endureth forever. Because you see, there are stones that we hide in our lives that we think God doesn't know about. We think He doesn't know about them. But you see here in verse 39, if we keep reading, it said, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. But you see, we can have a stinky situation. We don't want anyone near it. We want it buried deep. We want that stone buried deep because it's a stinky situation and we don't want nobody to know it. Not even God. I'm here to tell you, he already knows it. My dear people, some have stones that have been buried for months. Some bury them for years and years and years. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Take ye away the stone. And then in verse 40 we see here where Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou would believe thou should see the glory of God? In other words, Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Jesus said, the glory will be revealed in the midst thereof. My dear people, when we have problems in life, we need to hold on to Jesus Christ. We need to get back to the truth, not the truths. If you've ever noticed anything about this ministry, we tend to preach the gospel of Jesus more than than the epistles. Have you ever noticed that? Most people preach the epistles. Some of was from Romans forward. I normally preach from Romans backwards. Have you ever noticed that? I believe the Lord is wanting to lead us back to Jesus Christ, back to the truth. We're going to need him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 41, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. You see, Jesus Christ removed that stone with fearless faith, but he had help from heaven. He had help from the Father. We all have a Father. And we see here in verse 42, he says, And I knew that thou hearest me always talking to Father, to Father God. And if you think of God as not God, think of him as your father. As your father. Because that's what he is. And he said, I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it. He wanted them to hear the word. He wanted them to hear it. That thou, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And in verse 44 we see, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Did you notice something there? He said, Lazarus, come forth. And when Lazarus came forth, he was still bound, hand and foot. He was still bound, how? With grave clothes. He was bound with grave clothes. In other words, he was resurrected, but he was not yet released. He was born again and still bound. You understand? He was still bound with grave clothes. Jesus resurrected him, and he stood there, and he was still bound. He was resurrected. He had all that resurrection power in him, but he was not yet loose. His hands were bound. His feet were bound. And my dear people, the body of Christ today is bound hand and foot. They are bound hand and foot with grave clothes. You know what those grave clothes are? They're bound by low self-esteem. They are bound by unforgiveness. They are bound by bitterness. They are bound by criticism. They are bound by strife. They are bound by envy. They are bound by jealousy. They are bound by judgmentalism. The Word of God says in John chapter 3, 16, for, if, uh, for where envy and strife is, there is, every, there is confusion and every evil work. My dear people, when we have that going on in our lives, we open the door for the devil. We're bound, hand and foot, in grave clothes. 
with that resurrection power in us, we're still bound. The body of Christ today is resurrected, but not yet released. It is born again and still bound. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Hand and foot with grave clothes. Y'all paying attention. This is very, very important. The Lord says in Luke chapter 10, 19, He says, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. My dear people, how can we tread all over the power of the enemy if our feet are bound in grave clothes? Jesus Christ said in, in Mark 16, 18, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. My dear people, how can we lay hands on the sick and if our hands are bound with grave clothes? Grave clothes of unforgiveness, grave clothes of low self-esteem, bitterness, criticism, strife, envy, jealousy, and judgmentalism. You see... Resurrected, but not yet released. Born again and bound. That's the reason you're not seeing the, the power of God going, coming through the church of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In verse 44, if you'll notice here, the Word of God says, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, who? The other believers. He said unto them, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. You see, my dear people, Jesus Christ removes the stone. He removes the stone. But when someone is bound hand and foot, he has told us, the body of Christ, to loose him and let them go. That's right. He has told us to loose them and let them go. My dear people, don't let us allow the life of God to be imprisoned within us. Don't allow the power of the Holy Ghost to be imprisoned within us, bound hand and foot in grave clothes. What good would it have done for all that resurrection power, that same resurrection power that we have, what good would it have done for, in Lazarus and then for him to be left there bound hand and foot? You see, my dear people, many in the body of Christ today are resurrected, but they are not yet released. They are born again, but they remain bound. That's why we don't see more of the power of God. We don't see it flowing through the body of Christ, the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. The body of Christ is still bound. Bound by low self-esteem. Bound by unforgiveness. Bound by bitterness. Bound by criticism. Bound by strife. Bound by envy jealousy, judgmentalism, and quite frankly, sin of all sorts. Sin of all sorts. Yes, I believe in the message of grace, but you know something, there's a room for repentance too. There's a room for repentance. You know, when I went to church, I used to have pews up in the front where you went down and cried before God. I don't think we should have took them out because people have gotten carried away without, about grace. Yes, we're under grace. Hallelujah. <coughs> The Lord led me to Second Peter chapter 2, if you would turn there with me. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 19. In the King James, the Word of God says, 
while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Pay attention, people. Now, for of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. For of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. Now, in the Amplified, which expounds a little bit more on that, the Word of God says, For by whatever anyone, for by whatever anyone is made inferior or worse or is overcome to that person or thing, he is enslaved. I'll read that again. For by whatever anyone is made inferior or worse or is overcome to that person or thing, he is enslaved. My dear people, that's being resurrected and not yet released. Resurrected and not yet released. Many people are still bound to sin from the past. Sin that's been forgiven and yet they are bound to a guilty conscience or they are bound in unforgiveness which is turned into a root of bitterness. Quite frankly, they don't know how to get free from it. They don't know how to get free from it. My dear people, that is dead man's clothes and it is a stinky situation. You see, because we can never flow in the power and goodness of God because of a stinky situation. Not if we're resurrected and not yet released. Jesus Christ removes the stone. In other words, for of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. In other words, if self-condemnation overcomes you, you are bound by self-condemnation. If, you, uh, if criticism overcomes you, you are bound by criticism. If judgmentalism overcomes you, you are bound by judgmentalism. If bitterness overcomes you, you are overcome and are enslaved to that bitterness. If strife overcomes you, you are bound to that strife. If envy overcomes you or jealousy overcomes you, you are bound to that envy or to that strife. And I'm here to tell you, my dear people, you can't get rid of it by yourself. You can't get rid of it by yourself. It takes Jesus Christ to set you free. It takes Jesus Christ to set you free. I don't care how much faith you got, how deep you can dig your heels in the ground, you're not going to get free from it without Jesus Christ setting you free. <clears throat> My dear people, I want you to remember this one. Before a man or woman or person, whatever, can bind the enemy. Listen to me. Before a man can bind the enemy, he must know that there's nothing binding him. You understand? Before you can bind the enemy, you must know that there's nothing binding you. Because if you're bound, you're, you're, you're bound with grave clothes. You can't move. You understand? I'm going to give you an example, a biblical example, of some people that were resurrected but not yet released. Turn with me to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 14. What we have here is an example of some people resurrected but not yet released. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29 is a story of a boy who was set free 
from a deaf and dumb spirit. Now, <clears throat> beginning in verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, meaning Jesus, when he came to his disciples, he saw, he saw a great multitude about them. In other words, they were surrounded with people. And the scribes questioning with them. And straight away, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And when he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. <clears throat> and I spoke to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. Who's the people here that's resurrected but not yet released? The twelve disciples. I'm going to show you something that's going to stand you on your ear. <clears throat> this man said, And I spoke to your disciples and they sh that they should cast him out, and they could not. Jesus Christ giveth, uh, told uh, the disciples in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, He said that you will cast out all devils. All means all, does it not? Okay, here the disciples could not. Why could they not? Just like sometimes we can't. Why? Let's keep reading. <clears throat> he answered them and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straight away the spirit tore him, and he fell to the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cost it, cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help mine unbelief. Even Jesus can help your unbelief, my dear people. Did you know that? If you don't have the faith for it, ask Him for the faith. He'll give it to you. He'll help your unbelief. He'll give it to you. Let's keep going. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, He rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou deaf or thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead. He was as one dead. Insomuch that many said, he is dead. You know what happened there? He was slain in the spirit. That young man, that boy, was slain in the spirit. You see in verse 27, then Jesus said, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he arose. Amen? Verse 28. So the disciples, <clears throat> they said, And when he come into the house, his disciples asked him privately. They come because they was a little bit embarrassed, weren't they? Huh. They was a little bit embarrassed. They said, talking to Jesus, they said, Why could not we cast him out? Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said, and he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. How many times have we read that? We said, Well, we need to pray and fast to cast out that devil. Wrong. Keep reading. Let me show you something here. <coughs> fasting and prayer, listen to me, fasting and prayer are tools to put you into a place of spiritual sensitivity so that you can recognize 